hello again. So, um, it is currently March 16th. It's been a while since I've done an update. So we're going to go ahead and do one on the tropicals because it's still cold and the temperates have not woken up yet. So we'll start off with the pygmy drosera again. We've got a little rosiana here. Producing gamay again. We've got some carnivorous leaves to need to feed them today. Then drosera manii. Looking pretty good. And um, I think what was at Mirabilis is actually Elysiae. Because, uh, look at that. It's a two inch pot. Uh, it's kind of overlapped it. And the Madagascariensis is really going for it. And we've got another Elysiae or Mirabilis there. And the uh, Drosser Oxidentalis looks awesome right now. Uh, a lot of red. And the rest of this on the terrarium image so we can stabilize it. Yeah, so as you can see, that looks pretty spectacular. Lots of leaves. Then we've got Drosera Felix. Right there. And the Leucoplasta, which have Gamay. So you're looking to sell off a few of those, so if you want to get some of them, just send me a message. And I'll get back in contact with you. I already have one of them spoken for, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven servings available. And I'll go back to those later, since they're different. Lots of Palacios, subspecies Trichocallus, same for those. Looking to get some of the gamay off my hands. And then, uh, there's the Omissa. I have no clue what it's doing. I think it's producing some gamay, but I can't really get to it because the leaves are overlapping. So, uh, I'm going to see what happens with that. They might... do. I have no clue what they're going to do, actually. Uh, and then we've got... Placella, which they may can give me. No, not yet. Possibly that one. Not really sure. And then we've got some Pinguicula, Seriana, Pullings. They're coming along. Followed by some Potosiensis and Cyclosecta Pullings. Well, they should be selling at work because a lot of people. I like using these to control fungus gnats, ever since I got this one guy onto them. Uh, they're pretty effective with fungus gnat controls, so a lot of the local farmers have been asking about those ever since that. And there's a uh, the parent Potosiensis. We've got some Gamay for places, subspecies Trichocala started. Might try to sell it work again. And then we've got FTS Maroon Monster Flytrap. Chugging along with several growth points. And got the big mouth offspring. Looking pretty big. Uh, now, this is a decomposing cricket in that one. It didn't get butt all the way in. So, that happened. Uh, then we've got all those seedlings. Just typical seed runs. Nothing too special. Maybe some red cilia. But they have some awesome color to them. Then I've got my Micheliana by Goldbug in the terrarium because the winter kind of sucked here and I didn't want to lose it, so I moved it in. But I did lose the Albumensis I got from Melichamp, so not much I can do about that. But that Rosiana Fat Chance is coming in. Battling some mealy bugs on it right now. Then uh, got my Jonesy Eye by Leucophila Hybrid coming along nicely. Hopefully it's not a self-pollinated Jonesy Eye, because I'd like to get a hybrid and some strong genetics. And we've got more miners than I can bother to count. It's a little flavor. And even more miners. A lot of miners. They're actually starting to uh, snake their way into the spatter patterns by lamentations. Which look pretty good right now. A coppery color. And we've got some seed-grown rosias. They're pretty intensely colored, especially that sucker right there I'm focused on. And then we've got the Brunswick County, North Carolina Rubra. And Chanel's Ghost by Self. Okay, so that's all for the 10 gallon terrarium. I'm going to head over to the orchid table now because I got some new stuff. Okay, so there's my windowsill orchid terrarium in my bedroom. And we've got the Collagene Fimbriata Mini growing pretty nicely along with the 
some new growth coming in on the Media Calcar Decoratum. And then we've got Paphs. Lots and lots of Paphiopetalum. Uh, I've got that big one is Paphiopetalum Lowei. Uh, it's putting out a new leaf on the second fan right now. And then uh, got some new pickups from the Richmond Orchid Show last month. And that one blooming is uh, Paph Sukaculei. Let's look at the parents to see what it is, but when you get a closer look. So these are pretty easy to grow in window sills. I have a southeast fa uh, facing window. Kind of cut off the fertilizer regimen in the spring or the winter. So just started fertilizing them again. But you can see this is a pretty simple gray style, but very attractive path. Nothing too big or showy. A little dorsal sepal. If I pull out. Yeah, that's the flower. That's my hand in comparison. So you can see it's pretty small. Maybe, hmm, two inch tall flower. So that one is, uh, let's see. I'm actually gonna cut here and put this on my new tripod, which is, hmm. After I show you this really cool angle of that bloom. So I can read the labels of what these things are. We stated on um, some hybrids with some pretty impressive cultivars. So. Okay, so I'll give you this view while I go read off the labels for these things. So, they're all seedlings right now. They won't bloom for another two years or so. But uh, that flower belongs to... Don't fall over. It's a Papapetalium sacaculei rainforest, which has an AMAOS uh, award. And... The pollen parent is Secaculei Marriott Leopard AM AOS as well. So that explains why that one's so attractive. Both award winning plants. And then behind it we have the Paphiopetalum Henrianum Marriott Leopard Moon AM AOS as well by Henrianum Voodoo Chili. So that's a really cool little one. Um, there's an interesting story behind it, and it's snowing already. And that wasn't supposed to come until tomorrow. Crap. Uh, we're gonna get more snow than expected then. Uh, but yeah, so that's a tiny little flower. It's a strap leaf variety. Kind of pink pouched. Really cool little thing. Uh, and let's see, where is this one? Then over here, this area, we have, uh, I saw one of these in bloom at the orchid show and had to have this. Um, there was no talking me out at this one. It's a Paphiopetala Melipoense Green Giant by Melipoense Spider's Lair. AMAOS. Um, so this is going to be a big netted greenish white and black veined flower. It puts out a huge inflorescence. Or it would be escape, so it only has one flower. It takes like three months for the flower to open. So this is going to test plenty of people's patiences. And the last one is. Uh, also a really cool one. I'm excited for this one just because of the color. It's a Paphiopetalum Curtisii Althea AMAOS by Curtisii Dark Dominion. So that should be a black, almost swan-shaped flower. Petals point downwards on it instead of it sideways like this guy does. It also recurves in the back. It's kind of cool. Very satisfied with my purchases there. Um, I was tempted to get a Paphiopetalum Velosum, but it was $70. But it produces a flower that has like a seven centimeter wide dorsal sepal. So, kind of regretting not getting that one. And then, um, yeah, over the side we have Memorium Barber Duncan, which is doing this weird floppy leaf thing where they kind of flop over to the side. You can see. No clue why it does that. And uh, we'll see if we can do this whole thing on the tripod today because it does something really cool that I might be able to make use of. The, uh, the column actually will shift forwards on this so I can get um, closer to a subject matter. Where there's a truncata pitcher that just opened, and we have Fusca back there, and the Humboldtii, Utricularia, uh, Bashiana, nice forest inch pitcher, and the Caladium with another pitcher, the, then um, there's a big Caladium pitcher, it's like four and a half inches, pretty good size, really dark peristome, nicely flared, Good shape to it. Really like this one. No, you can't have it. Um, 
And we've got a Nile pitcher right there. And, um, I actually see if I can tease out Lorraine for you. It made a pretty nice pitcher, so I'll pull back. Focus. How does it feel not to have any shaky cam with this new tripod? So here's the Lorraine pitcher. Coming with a little lady pollen pitcher. Yeah, so that's Lorraine right there. As you can see. Um, I can't really turn it. It's a really stiff tendril because for some reason single lawn out hybrids always make these really hard leaves. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to do my little trick. Which is, yeah, I have to loosen this up and then, ah, and let's see, I'm gonna have to turn you this way, and switch the camera around. There we go. Okay. Now I can do this. Raise it up a little. I'm gonna actually cut the camera away. So there's the Lorraine's Peristone. Pretty nifty. Nice shape to it. I'm gonna settle it back down in there now. We just fed everyone right before I recorded this, so they should be nice and happy. And, um, let's see. I'm gonna do this. I'm actually gonna remove from the tripod now. I've got that up. Uh, yeah. Whoops. Uh, there's a Nepenthes Nile Intermediate pitcher, though. I should be getting upper soon. May have to cut it back before then, because it's at the very top of the terrarium. But, uh... It's got a good shape. I'm waiting for the peristome to flare out like um, Sam Estes has shown. And we've got hey, Dormouse with the Ventricosa right there. And then we've got Nepenthes Eustachia. It's still a little bizarre, screwed up pitcher. Um, I just sprayed everything with an herb, or not an herbicide, a fungicide a little while ago. And it's kind of deformed some of the leaves on these things. And we've got Vogelii over there, being photobombed by Lorraine. You can kind of see a new picture in the back right. And we've got an older one left. Then, whoops. Got a new McFarlane eye picture with a red peristome. An older picture back there. And Nepenthes mindanaoensis. One of my favorite Aleda relatives. Hairy margins on the leaves. Got that one coming along pretty nicely. And Ramaspina. It's some uh, nice dark pictures. Followed by a new Berkey eye, which my other one kicked the bucket from that fungus earlier. So that's why I sprayed everything to kill it. And I think um, fungus is gone now, so I can rest a little easier. And then we've got Mikey eye. Making little pictures. And we're going to do that burrowy eyes. David would be proud. Sir David, I should say. Yeah, got that. And then here's another pickup from the Orchid Show. Which was only $15. How could I say no? Uh, it's a Neophonidia falcata. Pure species. No, um... No fancy cultivar or anything. Uh, so it produces tons of fragrant blooms in the spring and summer. Probably gonna move it outside for that. They grow really fast, apparently. Uh, they actually can survive our winters here. But I don't want to risk that. And then we've got a Restrepia striata bloom, which I don't think I have shown before. So these weird little antenna-like petals. It's mostly just sepal you're looking at down there, and then a little dorsal sepal. And the lip. And column. That's pretty weird looking. Then we've got Spectabilis by Hamada. Back there. And the Ziphioides. Which is still coming along. And I had a basal offshoot on the seed grown Spectabilis. So, got a white pitcher there with a red stripe on the peristone. 
That should be really cool if this is a white variety. I see kind of some of the stripes showing up there. Yeah, got a basil. And then my Burbidgia by Fusca. Is what this is predicted to be. Working on a new picture. With the Singalana by Enormous by Mira. The weird orangey toothy thing, as they call it. Kinda cool. And uh, Regita Folio looks pretty sorry. I'm actually gonna to send that one to a friend in Brooklyn to nurse back to health. And then the Burbidja by Talangensis made a new picture. So there we go with that. Nice and stripey. It looks like, it honestly just looks like a Burbidja right now. I'm gonna have to wait until it gets bigger for any of the Talangensis traits to show up. I kinda like Burbidja a lot. Even though it gets huge. And then we have Naga. The dragon pitcher plant. With a little nub of a tongue. The last pitcher. A fairly large tongue, but this is a much bigger picture. And uh, as you can see, I'm gonna pull back that it's a lot larger than the leaf it's attached to, which is a good sign. Now, it's not pitch black like some other people's are, but I still like it. Then you've got, yeah, you can see more of the Burbidja by Talangensis there, along with a little good fat tubby Glabrata picture. That thing's finally going again. I think it likes whatever conditions I'm giving it. Followed by uh, Talangensis by Glabrata. Back there. With some little pictures. And we've got Nepenthes Alba hiding out back there. Only has two pictures. And then this is kind of cool. Um, this is my seed grown Lavicola specimen. Actually, I had to cut back the main vine, but. Look at the color that Peristome turned. Nice burnt orange. That was a weird noise. Yeah, so... This one's pretty variable with the striping on the pictures. It's really cool. I, might, I don't know if I want to register that as a cultivar or not. It might be too much work. Um, then we've got another little fat, obese, mutated Nepenthes Glabrata picture there. If we go over the top, kind of funny looking. Look at that little sucker. It's like a big golf ball. The lid and spots. And we have Utricularia calicifida. And oh, yeah, I had someone asking about these on Google Plus through the comments. There's another calicifida with flowers coming in. Those may take a while, but yeah, it's getting these more strap shaped leaves on that one. Then we've got Nepenthes Flava closing a pitcher and opening a new one back there. And what else? Empty pot. Um, yeah, then we've got some pictures back there. That's the Aime by Nizumie by Jacqueline. And Dryadella Teniawada. And uh, Nepenthes Ramaspina that Mason gave to me to look after because this was burning on the lights. So I brought it back to the Highland Intermediate Chamber, and it's growing. And then Maxillaria huntii, still alive. Followed by Ornithophora radicans, still growing away. And I had flowers on this in Cyclea polybulbon, but it opened one, and then it dropped the second. But it should get another one of that growth. And then uh, the Dracula Lodax is actually pretty happy. Look at that sucker. Growing away. Pretty bright light for one of those to tolerate too. Then um Brassavola cuxulata. New leaf right there. And the last messed up flowers on the Orangi Saluteo Alba. A lot of leaves. There's the leafy rooty part of that plant. And then we've got two flowers on the Sigmorcus pusilla. One's kind of messed up. Don't know why that happened, but they're like producing two flowers at the same time right now, which is weird. And Talangula bulbosa, Guatemala, and Oncidium croesus, doing nicely. And Bulbophila mirum, still growing. I'm gonna start fertilizing it more to get more flowers. And Sulfurnus cernua still looks pretty sorry. And Utricularia. Nephrophyla. I do dig at the tag because I can't remember that name for some reason. That's, uh, that's about it for the upstairs plants. I'll actually get some video of the um, dormant 
Cephalotus and Pinguicula, because the Assyriana has flowers on it, two of them right now. So I will go down there in a little bit, which will seem like a fraction of a second for you guys. So we'll go do that soon. Okay, so here are the warm temperate plants that I have. Uh, that's the Pinguicula Assyriana flower. And uh, get a better view of it. There we go. That's what it looks like, and there's the plant. Looks like it has another flower coming in. Uh, there's a cyclosecta back there. Then we have, um, was it Moctezuma by Gigantia? And there's my Ping Gigantia with the flower coming in. That thing gets huge. It looks like a piece of carnivorous lettuce, or carnivorous, plet, carnivorous lettuce plant. And we've got some Pygmy Drosera with Rosiana. And Palacia subspecies Trichocallus. Gimme Productions, I tried to see what their cold tolerance was. And then Cephalotus just coming out of dormancy. Right there. And then to reposition myself. Okay, so there we've got Utricularia tricolor with some subulata. Um, Sandersonii with Sandersonii blue. And Graminifolia. Wait, no, that's Sanders. Yeah, that's Livida right there. And then Laxa. And my Dendrobium and Nosemum, which is in its dry rest state. I will actually be moving that upstairs today to wake up. So yeah, that's all for my March update. And I will be updating next month, hopefully with some more cool stuff. Probably be getting some new plants in by then, and hopefully the temperate stuff will be waking up. So yeah. That's it for now, and hope you guys enjoyed. Until the next time.